Hello everyone, back to you to today's first video. We're going to do the ECMDF 30 day look at today's uh, first video for the UK and the rest of Europe as well. Looking at temperature and precipitation anomalies the next four weeks, taking us through pretty much to the end of uh, May. So it can be a bit of a May look ahead. And uh, we'll see what the ECMDF is forecasting for May uh, very shortly. Just say that today's second video update will be with you uh, later on this afternoon. That's going to be the week's end day video update, including all of the regular features. And um, could be in for a bit of a cold shock at the weekend, but more about that uh, later on in uh, the video. Uh, at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this one. So, big thank you to them for supplying us with these temperature precipitation anomalies. We can't show you 500 mm of our heights or mean sea pressure anomalies, unfortunately, but you can get a rough idea of the pattern from the temperature and precipitation anomalies. Uh, right, so we uh, start off with uh, week one. It's week 19 for the year, but it's week one for our forecast period, taking us from the 4th through to the 10th of uh, May. And we see that Northern Europe is cold of an average. We've got a swathe of cold and average temperature anomalies this week from uh, Scandinavia in the far north of Europe, all the way down to Greece and Turkey in the southeast. So really is this... Uh, uh, northern and eastern part of Europe that is quite significantly cold. Now, we're over into the western part of Russia, it's actually warm and average there. And uh, then into the western side of Europe, we can see that northern parts of the UK are colder than average, but Ireland and much of England are um, forecast to be slightly above average. But the warmest anomalies to average are actually through France, Spain and Portugal and down into the central bowl of the Mediterranean from Italy uh, westwards and also through North Africa where the heat is really now starting to uh, build up in, uh, in time for the summer, of course. So warming this southwestern corner uh, and then cooler generally in northern and eastern parts of the Europe. As far as the Mediterranean is concerned, it's warmer than average through the central and western part of the bed from Italy to Portugal. But uh, over the Adriatic into the Balkans I and mean, down into the southeastern part of, uh, of Europe, we see of uh, Mediterranean, we see that it is colder than average there. So quite a cool uh, temperature anomaly for Greece and also for Turkey as well. Precipitation anomalies for week one from the 4th through to the 10th of May, varying from area to area, but quite a lot of dry weather around through many areas in the far east of Europe, uh, sort of Black Sea up to uh, Ukraine and then down in towards Greece and Turkey. It's a bit wetter than average through there. France is also coming out wetter than average, as is northern parts of Spain and northern uh, Portugal. But otherwise, the Mediterranean, particularly the central bowl of the Med, uh, through to Italy, uh, those areas are drier than average. And then going further northwards, we see that it's drier than average through Germany, uh, low countries as well. North of that into uh, southern Scandinavia, so Denmark, southern parts of uh, southern parts of uh, Norway and Sweden, also driving average through those areas. Gets a little bit more unsettled for northern parts of uh, Norway, and then UK and Ireland also forecast to be quite significantly driving average uh, in the week ahead. So it varies from area to area, but quite a bit of dry weather. Uh, around in the coming week through uh, large portions of uh, Europe. Moving through to week two, this takes us from the 11th through to the uh, 17th. It's week 20 for the year, week two for our forecast period. Europe goes much colder. We see the far southeastern part of Europe from Italy over towards uh, Greece and Turkey becoming warmer than average through those areas. But they're the exceptions to the rule. Going further northwards, most parts of Europe are actually looking quite significantly cold now, particularly in this eastern and central part of Europe. So kind of like from eastern Germany over towards Western Russia, uh, there the temperature anomaly is going down to between 3 and 6 degrees below average, very significantly cold and average. Also up across Scandinavia, uh, we see uh, Sweden and Norway also uh, going 3 to 6 degrees colder than average. And more widely across many parts of Europe, including Ireland, UK, France, we see temperatures around 1 to 3 degrees uh, below average. So this is quite a cold week uh, coming up most definitely. Presumably we're getting uh, Arctic northerly winds and a trough of low pressure extending down uh, through much of northern and central Europe. 
precipitation wise we look like that so again it does vary from area to area in the far west of uh, Europe it's still drier than average here from the 11th to the 17th of uh, May so we've got uh, much of the UK much of Ireland northern, Fr northern France um, Belgium Holland many parts of Germany Denmark up to southern Norway and Sweden forecast to be rather dry and average also iceland is dry and average so probably some sort of um some sort of northern blocking or mid-atlantic ridge type pattern going on here conversely though many southern parts of uh, europe are actually wetter than average particularly with southwestern areas so spain and portugal are forecast to have above average rainfall Probably some big thunderstorms there through the central bowl of Mediterranean, also wetter than average, and the south of France as well. So from the Côte d'Azur down into the holiday islands of uh, the Balearic Islands, Mallorca, Minorca, Ibiza, and also Malta, Corsica, Sardinia. All of those holiday islands in the central bowl of Med looking rather wetter uh, than average. In the southeast corner, it goes drier than average again, though, through southern Italy, through to Greece and Turkey. It becomes drier than average through there. Of course, that's where it's warm as well this week. So that's where the high pressure is going to be down in the southeastern part of the uh, Mediterranean, southeast of Europe. Going further northwards, we see that to Poland, Ukraine, for example, uh, average precipitation anomalies there and that continues going full northwards up into uh, the Baltic. So the uh, sort of pattern seems to be some sort of ridge uh, through here, probably a trough of low pressure uh, around there. Northerly winds coming down around the eastern side of that ridge of high pressure and another ridge through here that brings the warmth out of North Africa. That appears to be the broad pattern for week two. Going through to week three, which is week 21 of the year, temperature anomalies. Again, another change it's a very changeable, ma'am. This has been signalled quite a lot in the model output that will have quite a bit of variation from week to week. The ECM is still going for this idea. So week three becomes quite a lot warmer across the west of Europe. We've got Ireland and the UK, also many parts of the low countries, um, coming out with above average temperatures now, around one to three degrees above average. So it's a much warmer week, this, compared to uh, week two. The cold average temperature is being pushed over to the far eastern side of Europe. So Ukraine, Black Sea, southwestern parts of Russia and also up to the very far north of uh, Sweden and Norway but otherwise most other parts of Europe have average uh, temperature anomalies or no signal through the Mediterranean, it's largely dry and average on the western side of the Med, uh, perhaps still a little bit on the unsettled side, of the, or perhaps a bit on the unsettled side, that southeastern part of the Med, but these are quite weak signals uh, so uh, warmer than average in the western part of the Med, perhaps a little bit cooler than average in the eastern part of the Med but again, they are very, very weak signals uh, that we've got there uh, precipitation anomalies for week 3 taking us from the 18th, 24th of uh, May, again, signals are weakening, dry and average uh, indicated for many parts of Scandinavia, so there could be some sort of Scandinavian high going on here, becoming a bit wetter than average to the west and southwest of Ireland, so low pressure might be trying to uh, get back in from off the Atlantic in this week. That could perhaps pull wind into the south, explaining why western, northwestern parts of Europe are going uh, a little bit warmer as well as winds swing into the south. Overall, quite weak signals, though, for uh, week three. Many areas in those white shadings, which, of course, is either average or more likely, again, we're talking about week three, no signal. And then finally we go through to week 4. It's uh, week 22 for the year. It takes us from the 25th to the 31st of May, right to the very end of the month. Um, another change, actually, many parts of the Med become warmer than average. So it becomes much warmer for the Mediterranean. Summer warmth really starting to uh, kick off then as we come to the end of May. Down through the Med, we've got southern Spain warm and average. Most of the central bowl of the Med uh, warm and average. Italy over to Greece and up to Balkans warmer than average as well. Further northwards, we have a lot of white going on, lots of no signal. It is a bit cold and average still for far north of Scandinavia. Scandinavia. But I think reading between the lines, the ECM is probably, after that cold plunge that we have through the second week of May, the ECM is probably indicating temperatures recover in the second half of the month. And generally, things probably turn uh, uh, quite a bit warmer through the second half of May after that cold northerly shock that we have in uh, week two. 
Uh, finally, precipitation for week four, taking us from 25th to 31st of May. Again, we see lots of white going on, lots of no signal. Looks like it could be a little bit dry on average in the southeastern part of Europe, around the Balkans, perhaps. Uh, maybe a bit wet on average towards the northwest, so some parts of northern Germany, possibly towards the North Sea, close to Denmark as well. Just a little bit wet on average there. But really, the signals are too weak to be able to draw any conclusions for precipitation at this point um it's not worth uh trying to draw conclusions that just aren't there so it's a changeable may but we've got coming up and we're going to also going to have a bit of a cold shock through the first half uh, of may and we, we've been seeing this coming within the model app and of course we'll talk more about it in today's second video update but uh, potentially we see a real northerly plunge across many parts of Europe, taking us through the second week of May, and uh, and uh, it will be quite a shock. After that, I think the indications are there that temperatures gradually start to recover through the middle and second half of the month. It gradually starts to warm up. Um, but uh, signals very weak for precipitation. So whether that's warm and settled or warm and unsettled or warmer and settled or warmer and unsettled, I think that is uh, to be revealed. Maybe there will be variation from area to area through the second half of the month. Right, just a snapshot of what the model is showing today. It could all look very different next week. Any forecast beyond five to seven days is fraught with um, health warnings and dangers. So, uh, just a snapshot of what the model is showing today. We're going to be back later on with your week to 10 day update. That will have all of regular features, so come back for that then. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.